What's going on guys? Welcome to this tutorial on Adobe Premiere Pro CC. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to utilize the timeline. Also, understand better how layers work in Premiere Pro. Now, sometimes when we look at Premiere Pro, and I've said it before, it is similar in ways to an application like Photoshop. So if you do see layers and you see something like this right here, my watermark is above the video layer one because if I watermark a video, I never want this to be behind the video where you can't see it. So that's going to be on video layer two. But if we look at video layers one, two, and even three, we see that in comparison to the audio layers, there's only two audio layers. And the reason why I did that was because there was way too many layers in the preset for this project. So what I did was I removed some of the layers, actually a lot of them. So if you notice that and you ever want to remove a layer, all you have to do is right click over here and you can select delete track. Now another option you can also select is delete tracks where you can delete numerous tracks. The only thing I'll say though is if you click over here and right click, you're going to see that you can't remove the layers. So this is something that might confuse people because they might right click over here and they see there's no option to delete the layer. And then over here again, you can delete the layer. So that's something I want to explain. And then as far as the selections here, you can see when you bring in a video, I have the layers here selected and that's important. You need to make sure that you have one of these layers selected, especially when you're bringing these new files from your project panel. If you don't have the project panel open, you go window and then select project. This is where you include all your files, you can create folders, and I've explained this in other tutorials. Now I'm going to close that panel, and over here you notice that I do have a video. Now the situation with this video is that it's associated with audio 1 because the audio is locked with the video. So if you have the audio and video locked together, they're synced together. So if I right click on this, I could unlink these if I want to, and right here it says unlink. And that way I can take this audio and move it around. And if I don't want to do that and I want to relink them, you select both of them at the same time, right click and then select link. You can also select group. If you want to group a bunch of files together, I can select all of these at once and then right click and select group. And then I can move them around like this. So if I just select that. So I'm going to press Command Z, Command Z again, and then Command Z. Now another thing I did, and I explained this in other tutorials as well, I muted the tracks here so we wouldn't hear the audio. And all you have to do is select this icon here to mute the tracks. And if you want to as well, if you want to add tracks, you can right click over here and select Add Tracks. Now the situation here with adding tracks, again, you want to think about your project. If you have a lot of audio files, if you have even a lot of video and audio files, and if they're linked together, whatever the situation is, you might want to add more tracks. But at the same time, to organize all of this, you might want to also select over here, right click, and rename it. That way you can organize it. And another idea for organizing your project, you can right click and select add marker. So that way if I want to know what point in time I'm in the timeline, I'm going to right click, select the add marker, then double click the marker. And over here we can give the marker a name if we want to. And we can also type in comments. That way when you go back to the project, you can select that marker again and you can understand what you were working on. It's also a good idea if you're working with other people on a project because when they see those markers, they can double click on it so then they can read the comments about the project. Now as far as the way this looks, when we have a view of the layers like this, this is because we want to see everything on the timeline. But there's situations where you want to edit the audio, say on this audio layer here, on audio layer 1. You want to zoom in and then also you can adjust the size of the layer itself that way you can see more details of the audio. And this is something I always utilize when I'm editing audio in Premiere Pro. Because when you export this audio and say something like Adobe Audition, that way you can see the details even more of the audio. But if you're just gonna edit audio in Premiere Pro, this is a really great idea. With the video layer, typically I would utilize the view like something like this. And another question I get a lot is people who just wanna render a certain area of the video. That way they can test the video themselves, especially when they add effect to a video. In this situation, if I go on the timeline, we have an in point and an out point. If I right click and select clear out, and I can right click again and then select clear in. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select mark in. Then right here, right click and select mark out. That way we have a portion there that could be rendered. Now if you notice, if I go to file, export, and I select media, Premiere Pro is only going to select that area. And you can adjust this over here if you want to. And that's how you can render only a certain portion of the project. So those are some tips with layers in Premiere Pro. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace out.